<laughs> and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer into the temple, creator of Epigioni, the myth pop, the myth pop RPG, which we'll be getting exactly what exactly myth pop is shortly. The one and only Nicola Sant'Agostino. I'm hoping I got that right. That's a, it's perfect. Like in Italy, <laughs> you are, you are a, an Italian speaker. <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not an Italian speaker per se. I just have experience. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing today, man? Well, uh, I'm a little tired for the Kickstarter, but mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, it is my first in, in, in uh, English speaking interview, so <laughs> I'm a little uh, I have a lot of thanks at mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> everybody's got to have the first at some point. Yes. So Speaking of that, it's a bit of a tradition of mine to open up with the humble beginnings, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So, with that in mind, I'd like you to walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Well, uh, we are speaking about ancient times. So, I started, uh, as a, uh, I started in 1996 uh, as, a, as a master for, mm -hmm. with the red box, back me, be mm -hmm. his uh, uh, classic uh, old D&D. And then, uh, after, uh, I, 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 first of all, in Italy, we, did, we didn't have, uh, in the first 90s, a great uh, RPG culture, okay? So, mm -hmm. I, live, I lived in a little town, Tortona. And mm -hmm. we didn't have a comics co comic shop or RPG. We, 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 it's, it's like it was like the desert, okay? So you had to hope <laughs> to play RPG. And um, and we have our satanic panic in 1996 in my city because mm -hmm. we have a, a problem. So started playing RPG in that, in that period was not the best idea in the world. And mm -hmm. uh, after that, I try. I took some uh, some other books like uh, Mage Ascension on Second Edition, mm -hmm. and then the one of my greatest love, Exalted, from mm -hmm. uh, Robert Wolf. Oh, I love I love me some Exalted. Well, Exalted is, Epigony is uh, one of uh, uh, there's some uh, some of Exalted in Epigony. Yeah, it was. I was I was going to be curious about that if if there were some notes from Exalted or Scion that served as inspiration. Yeah. Uh, yes, Scion and uh, um, a lot of people told me that is like City of Mist, but as I said, no, is is it's, it's like uh, it's more like Scion meet the Yard. Yeah, <laughs> I can see why people would compare City of Mist to what you're to what you're doing, but I but I'd say that comparison is very is very surface level yes oh. uh, even uh, even if uh, city of miss is a noir so uh, more it's a more investigative uh, than uh, pigony pigony is a lot of action you have a lot of, you have the introspection but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of action mm -hmm. uh, as i said is a schopenhauer with explosion yeah now with that with that in mind what prompted the idea to go, to go ahead and start and start Epigioni? Was it was it bit was it based on a, you doing a lot of house ruling? Was it an idea that it's stuck in your head for a while? What was that? How did that go down? Well, it's a long it's a long story. Um, I started uh, in uh, 2000, 2002. When I started to do uh, to, uh, attend university in Bologna, mm -hmm. well, and my first book on the train when I was going to Bologna was uh, American Gods. Mm -hmm. After, um, I, I fell in love with it. I love it. It was perfect for me. And uh, then I discovered Sion. Yeah, and I was uh, and I was um, playing Exalted at the, at, in, the, in the time. So, uh, Sion, I, I love the idea behind Sion, but the system was not uh, 
was not so so interesting for me. I, I GM a two years campaign. They started from uh, heroes to to became god, but it was not so. Uh, it was a, li a, li a little uh, unflavored. We, we, you, you can't be a real god in, in Sion. Uh, uh, the power, the power level was not so interesting. Mm -hmm. So I started to work on mine, uh, or to, to work in, more or less in to try to make Sion with other rules, uh, with other systems. So I tried Savage Wars. I tried uh, Fate. Mm -hmm. I tried the uh, PBTA, Play by the Apocalypse, mm -hmm. um, but the, there's there's something missing every, every time, and I put it in uh, in the in the in the garage, as I say in Italy. And um, after some years, when I was mastering D&D, uh, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, mm -hmm. one of my players started to we had we had a little discussion about. Uh, Improvisation in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the f and they told me that I was uh, a tyrannical master because uh, for, for some for, for some moment, and uh, so I think oh well oh yeah, and I you uh, so let's play some more narrative if you like it, and uh, so I created the, <laughs> the first uh, epigony. Mm -hmm. It was a revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, sometimes spite is the be is the best muse. Well, uh, is one of the of the um, motto behind our team is uh, the power of spite. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of our our product is is, is powered by spite. I've um, <laughs> the joke uh, the joke that I've always to I've always told is that um, is that spite was Todd McFarlane's great greatest muse. Yes. <laughs> As I say, in, um, as I say, sometimes is uh, if love uh, if love make the world uh, the world moving, uh, is, uh, spite is the um, the the axe uh, the axis mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where they move. And um, so we started this um, this experiment, uh, and uh, a lot of people like it, like it did. Uh, and so I decided to go in <laughs> to go in full berserk and try to produce it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a it was a long ride. Uh, we speak we spoke about uh, more or less five years now, mm -hmm. because Italy is not uh, so is not a great <laughs> is not a great RPG movement uh, zone. Let's say mm -hmm. we had a lot of problem, but because Italy is a we have, we have a, we have little players. Uh, we have, you have, we had uh, we have a great uh, festival, but. Uh, like the community is uh, the community is uh, little, mm -hmm. so uh, and now we are on Kickstarter <laughs> with with three with three books mm -hmm. and a lot of anxiety. Yeah. Now you've described it as a myth pop RPG. Yes. yes. Um, how did that term come to be, and how do you define it? Well, uh, first of all, Meat Pop was a, a term created by one of my friends because uh, we, we, we need something to be different from the other games. Uh, we have that something for, to be different uh, because, they find, because the philosophy behind uh, Epigony is a little different from Sion or from City of Mist. And uh, we need some, and uh, um, one of the, the things I hate is creating tag without a manifesto. If you know, you know Necrobiotic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So the Necropunk movement, uh, <laughs> I am the, the creator of the Necropunk uh, term. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we, uh, if you took Necrobiotic, my name is here. Is there. Um, and so when, we, when, when I want... Um, so what is the Meat Pop? Meat Pop is, uh, uh, you know, Ursula Kreber Legan? Mm -hmm. Okay. She she created she wrote a book that was called the, the language of the night. Mm -hmm. In that book, she spoke she talked about the idea that uh, pop culture is uh, one of, is the modern mythology. Okay, we we are um, we, we as a human species the human species need the story need the storytelling. We we are we are. We need to create. We need to to. We need to believe in something. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have this uh, this necessity. 
So in the ancient times, we created, for example, divinities. We created uh, legends. We created uh, uh, fables. And now, and uh, in uh, first in the first uh, the first century, the first 19th, 19th century, we created sci-fi. We create. We need stories. So the Met Pop is the idea that behind uh, um, these things, uh, everything is mythology. Mm -hmm. You have uh, you don't you what is the, the difference between Superman uh, or uh, Shiva or Rama? Mm -hmm. What is the difference between Spider? -Man? They are um, they are uh, example. We need them. We have Paragon. A lot of mm -hmm. people believe uh, maybe not as a religion but as um, as a lesson of life. You know, with great power can great responsibilities. They mm -hmm. are lesson of life. We. We use them. We need them, uh, and so this is the mythology that we that we created. The mythology that uh, is the mythology of our world, of our modern world. Mm -hmm. Meat pop is like this. So we put uh, an Armani suit on Zeus, uh, and uh, we you can <laughs> you can um, go um, go in a fist fight with the idea of uh, romanticism. Yeah, meat pop is like this. Mm -hmm. It's glam, and. With the, with that in mind, one thing that I definitely appreciated with the vi with the visual design. I'm curious if this was your idea, if this was the artist's idea, was to represent to use gold lines to represent the mythos, o yes. um, overlapping the mundane. Yes, we, this was uh, this was one of the my, of my first idea and. Um, uh, when my art director Alessia Sagnotti took uh, my rambling uh, and made them art, uh, she she decided she decided to um, upgrade this idea to make it more uh, more important in the book, in the core book, and in the other uh, and in quick start because uh, gold is the uh, the um, the sacred material for excellence for excellence. Uh, and uh, if you look at the character sheet, uh, they are cost they are constructed. The character sheet is constructed like uh, a an altar. Mm -hmm. You have at the center of the character sheet uh, the Im the image of the character, and uh, is, 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 there's a lot of sacrality in uh, in Epigone. There's a lot of no no in a sacrality. I think is the correct word. Mm -hmm. um, there was, uh, and um, we 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 started to to. To make the we start to think that the world need to be more uh, more uh, special. Mm -hmm. So the gold is uh, the color of the of the god of the god of the goddesses of uh, incarnation of. Uh, but then, uh, as you you have even the magenta or the cha or the cyan. Mm -hmm. The three colors of the. The three colors of the um, of the palette are magenta, magenta, cyan, and gold. Mm -hmm. Yellow, because uh, it was uh, more uh, pop, I would say. Yeah, and there's the. I w I was um, I was somewhat reminded of a bit of a bit of some bits of punk art and some bits of that same style of pop art that War that Warhol was doing back in the sixties. Yes. Yes. Uh, I I had a great I love uh, a lot of um, well my my first <laughs> now, I, now I am 39 I, I have 39 years okay mm -hmm. and when I was adolescent during my 16 my sweet 16 mm -hmm. I was a punk mm -hmm. I love uh, punk music I love bad religion uh, a lot of uh, California West Coast punk. Mm -hmm. And uh, music is a lot important. Uh, music is one of the great, uh, uh, one of the great uh, um, engine behind the Pigony. Mm -hmm. uh, we love music in Epigony. The, the system, the corporate is created to um, to make the fight uh, to make the fight uh, like uh, an OST as duration, yeah. like an a soundtrack as duration. And uh, we took a lot of inspiration fro from Lady Gaga for the palette for the manual. Mm -hmm. So yes, we we decided the color are a lot. We have a, a great um, bond with the music mm -hmm. connection. Now speaking of that, I want to touch on the Copperhead system. Yes, because it's interesting that you met that you mention 
um, Exalted being one, being one of your inspirations, and obviously that using the storyteller system with the not with the many many um, rolls of d10s um, mm -hmm. to the point that I've used the shadow run rule of it, when rolling d10s and exalted <laughs> the amount of d10s you need to bring is more. Yes, but I guess I'll start with the fact that you're using a d8 based system. Um. What prompt? What prompted you you to use that die, in particular? Oh, you know that the, the first time that the one asked me this question, <laughs> so uh, I decided to use the D eight system because uh, um, I like the number the number number mm -hmm. eight. Eight is like uh, if you put it in or, in horizontal is uh, the infinity number. So it was uh, it was the infinity the infinity symbol. So it was uh, a lot. Uh, uh, important for Epigony and because he wa is one of the less used dice in uh, RPG system. Mm -hmm. So, I, so, I, so I, I said that we have the, the 10 system, we have the 6 system, we have <laughs> why not the 8 system? Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, was a, it was a bet because maybe people didn't like the idea, but in Italy it was uh, really appreciated because uh, uh, it's like. Uh, more special with with a different set of dice mm -hmm. you have something different yeah and as i as i as i understand as i understand it um with the way with the way that it's the way that you have the that you have the um copperhead system set up it is to, it instead of using a GM set difficulty. You have a um, result-based approach, not too far removed from powered by the apocalypse. Yes. Um, we decided to. Uh, my rule consultant, Matteo. So first of all, the copper system is a, a system created by two person, two people, mm -hmm. me and Antonio Rossetti. That is uh, the great, uh, as I call him, mathematician behind the project. Mm -hmm. He loves statics, a statistician, is a statistician and an engineer. And uh, uh, we have a consultant that is Matteo Schutteri. Mm -hmm. When we decided to, to to create the copper, when we started to work on it, and after a lot of iteration, we decided that uh, we need uh, some. When you when you create something new, mm -hmm. why we need you need to be in the, in contact with your time with the zeitgeist. So. And uh, so we decided to use something more like uh, PBTA, uh, the Apocalypse. Uh, in Italy, we call it, in Italy we call him um, we call it the PBTA. So sorry for uh, <laughs> I don't know we, we call it PBTA in Italy, the, the play by the Apocalypse. So um, we said to to make the GM uh, the, to make the the play like more like a, the, the play more like a conversation mm -hmm. as a PBTA because. Uh, we are in Italy. In Italy, we have a lot of uh, of, of love for crunchy system. First of all, mm -hmm. we have in, in Italy the the new wave of RPG is uh, is not hated, but we had a lot. We had we had we had, we had ten years ago. We live in we live in the in the, in the, in the first two thousand sometimes. And so we we started to create when we wanted to create a, an Italian engine because the copper system you can find it in each on each mm -hmm. Uh, I put it um, is uh, the toolbox, the copper, the copper system toolbox. Mm -hmm. The the rules are free. We put yeah. them in Creative Commons. So when we decided to put something to create an engine, an Italian engine to to, to give to the world, as mm -hmm. you can say, uh, we we started to we we decided to experiment to create something more modern. We create, uh, uh, as I said, the. The, the copper is like a second generation PBTA, mm -hmm. um, more uh, it, like a forged in the dark, like the forged in the dark, uh, or mm -hmm. the um, or the spire, or the resistance system from Spire. I think that is uh, one of the of the branch of that experience. Yeah. yeah. Now, with that with that in with that in mind. And I can definitely see the Forged in the Dark influence, especially with yeah. the um, use of the of counters. Yes. Oh. And the mm -hmm. and the, the rank system. Mm -hmm. The rank system is uh, is one of uh, is not the same, okay, but uh, is uh, 
uh, we tried to make the Cartesian uh, system of the forge. You know that forge has uh, position and effect, no? Mm -hmm. uh, so we tried. I tried, and with the Anto with the Antonio notice that uh, no, no, see that uh, that experiment to make the rank system, the contrast of rank system, uh, like a mathematician, a mathematic formula for uh, the um, for the effect and position uh, uh, of forged of the forged. Mm -hmm. So we had the, I love forging the dark system. I, I, I am one of the stretch goal of two, if you know the, the game. Mm -hmm. from the, so I I, I, I I wrote one of adventure of one of them, an adventure as a stretch goal for two. Yeah. Now I will I will admit one of the other one of the other things that struck me regarding the design is th is this keyword based approach. Yes. Oh. Because I'm get I'm guessing one of the things that you wanted to you wanted to veer away from was the traditional method of. At, of attribute and skill relationships. Well, yes, and uh, uh, so I have I am uh, I need a little premise. Mm -hmm. I am anthropo uh, I, stu I studied anthropology at the university, so I have an anthropology an anthropo <laughs> anthropologue mentality mentality. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Italy, we play RPG different. Uh, every every country play RPG different. Okay? Oh yeah. Um, for example, American style. Uh, I, I took D&D as, as an example. Okay, American style of D&D is more is like uh, um, you know what you need to do. You go, you you make your adventure. For example, let's uh, let um, the adventure league for D&D. Okay, in Italy, uh, in Italy, a session for the adventure league uh, so usually didn't uh, don't, don't end because mm. we are, we are, we are a lot we have, um, we we talk a lot. For uh, for uh, for Italian people, uh, role playing is a lot playing, <laughs> like in theater. We speak a lot, we talk a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the adventure. Um, so sometimes we in my D and D table we didn't uh, use that. We didn't uh, roll a dice for three four session, for mm -hmm. example. And uh, so when I created the corporate system, I I took the the, the fate experience, but uh, I decided to create something with a uh, more fla Italian flavor. When you need, as I say, as I say, with in, as, as a joke, uh, you have to uh, to go, to persuade the GM that you are right. When you are fancy, so you have you have your words. You have uh, when you take an action, you for every word for, for every word you use from your sheet, for a sheet, mm -hmm. you have bonus. But the idea behind the copper system is uh, is that uh, every person at the table is a storyteller is a the gm is a player like a, the others and they two and they all together created the, the story the session the scene mm -hmm. with the some int in this in the character sheet mm -hmm. so this is the idea behind the narrative uh, engine of the copper the narrative yeah now <clears throat> I'm no stranger to get to games whose design is based on keywords. Yes. And as as we speak, I'm writing a review of another game from another game from Italy, um, not the end. Oh well, no, yeah, fumble. Oh, <laughs> like like I said, like I said, this isn't my f this. I've um, <clears throat> in, if you look through my archives, there's quite there's quite a few interviews I've done with. Italian devs and I've and um, I'm in my review archive I've done um, Lex Arcana when that got translated into English. Yes. Oh. Uh, but as well as I guess the Universalis, but um, mm. a key thing that I've that I have br that I've brought up with Fate. In fact, it's one of the things that's frustrated me about Fate. Is a lack of guidance when it comes to those tags. Yes. Oh, uh, because a lot of because fate, of course, has their aspect system, which is their version of tags. And while they'll give a bit of a blurb about each type, whether it be high concept, trouble, the freebies, whatnot, a lot of fate games do not give 
Oh, do not give advice on what would make a good or a bad example for that particular type. Oh, an example of something that actually does this, even though it's not fate, is um, 13th Age. It has the tag known as one unique thing. Yes, I know. I know <clears> the <throat> grenade. I, I like it. And it'll give. And there's a two-page spread in the core book for 13th Age that gives. So that gives good examples and why, some questionable examples and why, and a absolutely not. And yes. I think that kind of thing is important for um, both new G both new GMs and GMs and pl and players who are getting into this from a diff from a different style of play than they're used to. Do you plan on having a le a level of guidance as far as what? Tags would be best for would would be best for work well, for well. words, um, and the like. Well, uh, first of all, uh, you so the quick start, but the quick start is uh, uh, we are working on the on the two um, two point zero version after the Kickstarter, mm -hmm. and uh, um, with the copper system, we created other games. We, we have the team that created a lot of. Um, we have five five uh, six games uh, in creation. And uh, we did we did a lot of experiment, a lot of experimentation, and uh, in uh, I can say um, I can assure you that in the core book uh, we will have not not only example but uh, um, for every kind of for every category of word we will have example and uh, example of tag and uh, how can you use them? Mm -hmm. For example, uh, let's say um, bodybuilding. Okay, so as a bodybuilder, you can use this tag to um, strength check, to to uh, maybe uh, something like uh, intimidate your enemies. Uh, we we will we will make a, 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 a list of tag with the explanation mm -hmm. and uh, a guide. Uh, the the core book will be a, a more or less, more or less like a, a procedure <laughs> book. Mm -hmm manual a real, a real manual when we will explain how to create your qualities for the entity of the myth how to create uh, your tag uh, how to work and uh, how to create your personal uh, vision at the table uh, the core book is a, a lot of uh, is a, a guide mm -hmm. a guide to make your own epigony as a collector yeah and with the, with that in with that in mind i'd like to shift into um what into one of the other mechanics that being obols the representation of fate yes uh, oh. the fate the fate is a lot is a, is a, the fate in epigon is a lot uh, european uh, european tradition yeah now uh, when it comes to fate i will i will ask this was was fate was fate kind of your answer to doing something a little more reason Reasonable with things like the Great Curse or the way fate works in Scion. Mm. So, uh, the idea behind fate in Epigony is uh, that you are not. Uh, uh, for example, in example, we have the Great Curse, but uh, you are the year of the story. You are the exalted. The exalted. You mm -hmm. are cursed. In uh, Sion, uh, the idea behind the fate is uh, that the fate is uh, the, the bonding between you and your destiny. In Epigony, the fate is uh, the enemy. In Epigony, mm -hmm. you are not the son or the, or, or the daughter of a divinity or of a real god. Mm -hmm. You are, the, you are the, the descendant of a story, of something that people created. And so the fate is uh, the, mechanic, the mechanism that make story as they are and is uh, like uh, what are you you are a bug in the system so i need to correct you mm -hmm. but it's not sentient is a mecha is a mechanical is a, like a, like a mad computer so you, you are for him uh, like a bug you are uh, you are not important uh, is, and so the idea behind the fate in epigon is 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 real terrible is an alien force, is something like an eldritch entity. Mm -hmm. But uh, because your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your quest, uh, the, 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 the more important part of an epigone is uh, to write your own story and to be free from fate. Mm -hmm. 
Fate in, in Sion, as I say, in Sion, the power, the, your destiny is to become a god. In Epigone is to become a common person. Mm -hmm. to, <laughs> you have only to be yourself. At the end of the campaign, uh, we say we have the last, the last chapter that this is called um, Riding on with, uh, with the, on the sunshine, riding uh, on the on the dawn, no, not the dawn, the tramont, uh, twilight, riding, mm -hmm. uh, riding with, with, on the twilight, because yeah. uh, you become a normal person. Mm -hmm. Your your idea is not to be a god. The god are lie, I lie. God, mm -hmm. divinity, everything is a lie. Mm -hmm. You are the real, you are the, you are a real person now. Mm -hmm. So faith is difficult, yes. Yeah. The faith is terrible. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the game is not so powerful. Mm -hmm. You have uh, to decide. You have fate has power on you if you decide to give it to them, to him, to it. Yeah. And I think what I think what I like about the Obal pool, the way you have it set up, is that it's not it's not exactly a it's not. Ex it's not exactly some a guarantee that it's go that it's going to take effect. Um, what? It is it is obviously a it can obviously be used in fateful challenges to make a player's life interesting for, by the GM, but it's still at the whim of the dice gods, and yes. the dice gods are not kind. Yes, and um, the challenge of fate, uh, the fateful challenge is. Uh, um, is uh, like a bet, mm -hmm. okay? So is uh, in uh, in Epigony for uh, in Epigony the ma the GM uh, that don't uh, use dice. He, uh, he only he only declare what happened and the player uh, roll the dice. Mm -hmm. Like in modern system, like a lot of new way system. Yeah. And uh, the the idea behind the the, the Epigony behind the Epigony, not the copper system. The copper system is more uh, neutral. In mm -hmm. Epigony, the idea behind uh, some uh, rules, uh, some specific rules, uh, is the game uh, switch between modern and old. When the fate mm -hmm. uh, uses uh, its rules, uh, the game became a traditional game. So mm -hmm. uh, with um, hidden hidden roles, uh, with the ma with the GM that can use, they can uh, choose, for example, the consequences of your of your uh, of your uh, of your roles. Uh, that um, with the uh, with the faithful challenge, the faithful challenge is. Uh, but, but if you think in D and D, when you in Dungeons and Dragons, when the master intervene on the in the scene, uh, you roll the dice. Maybe <laughs> the the fumble is behind the corner, as we said. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that fate is not uh, your adversary. It's not your enemy. The mm -hmm. fate is only the mechanic of the world that wanted to make your story more interesting, but you all can die. <laughs> yeah. Um, and when when it comes to the role of fate, based on how you described it, would would a more contemporary um, analogy be the exiles in the Matrix? Well, uh, yes, we can say that uh, Matrix wa is one of the inspiration of mm -hmm. the of the fate system of the fate of the idea the fate, but even existence from Cronenberg, if you know mm -hmm. the film. Uh, the idea that uh, that the, there is a there is a um, even is a Kai system, for example. Uh, the idea is the world uh, you you when you are a normal person uh, you live in a simple world in a world that you have free will, a world where the only rules were that of, of physics of gra like gravity like uh, natural laws. When you become a when you receive the gash, mm -hmm. the world uh, changed for you and now you are uh, you are the victim of the rule of narration, fate the rules of narration. You are. Uh, in, in another system with other with other with other uh, entities with other with other people and we we can say that there is an, another destiny we call uh, the class uh, of uh, the classes of epigony destiny mm -hmm. destinies and one of the other destinies the atheist that are normal people that receive the gash uh, as, have as uh, enemies uh, the vectors the vectors are more like the agents, more like agents, ag the agents of the matrix. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know this. What this wasn't. Um, 
this wasn't delved this wasn't delved into too much in the quick start but i'm curious about it about advancement well uh a lot of people ask me about advancement and uh, we have <laughs> because we in the quick start mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, in epigony uh, when i created the epigony i decided to know um, i didn't like the idea of the power of the power creep you start the, you are a lot you, you have a lot of power when you start in epigony so I decided for something different, uh, and uh, in Epigony you uh, level up your story. Mm -hmm. You level up your story by with, um, doing challenges, faithful challenges, specific or faithful challenges that are called uh, the um, the paths, the mm -hmm. path, the the path of the hero from Campbell. Uh, and every every time you do one of these faithful challenges that the player declare, you started to took your own story mm -hmm. in your answer and uh, make connection for example you can you can try to to make uh, to connect uh, with a mentor you mm -hmm. can uh, you uh, gave you give you started to have to um, oh, well to 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 take new words uh, new keywords mm -hmm. you add your some keywords to your categories uh, and after uh, a lot of uh, of uh, after seven, I think, uh, faithful challenge of the path, you uh, be, you discover your potential. Mm -hmm. The the five the five uh, the fifth keywords. After that, you become uh, you, do, you you will do an, another adventure, a lot, of, a lot of adventure, and become a normal person. Mm -hmm. Because. Uh, Epigony is about humanity. Yeah. It is the beauty. <clears throat> and in that in that vein, what in that vein um while part while part of it is locked off, I'm I'm curious how um potential and prophecy plays into that. Well, uh what is uh, let's start that in the quick start you can see that the um, character sheet has locked prophecy mm -hmm. uh, potential potential sorry uh, potential is uh, what you can you could be but for your life for your fears uh, because uh, because the reason as you, say, uh, you you didn't uh, you didn't know it you lost it you mm -hmm. you, you didn't discover it and so the the great the great adventure behind the pigeon is discover your potential mm -hmm. and proficiency the other keywords your 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 job uh, your challenge uh, are what to define you now mm -hmm. because in epigony the great struggle is between your human side your martial side and your supernatural uh, slash uh, demigod side but uh, is you, you discover that you are not a demigod you are <laughs> You are enough story. Mm -hmm. You have you are enough lie. So you can choose to level up your human side with the path, or to level up your story side, your lie side, your supernatural side, by, by um, asking the invocation, uh, asking the fate, conjuring the fate, with the mm -hmm. mechanics of conjuring the fate. But when you when you choose to to do to do this. Uh, there's <laughs> it's not the best idea so mm -hmm. epigon is, is a lot about uh, what you are what you can be not mm -hmm. uh, what uh, another entity another story uh, what uh, you it's your it's your own story not the stories written by others mm -hmm. be pride of what you are yeah now <clears throat> with the with with that in with that in mind, when it comes when it comes to when it comes to each of the each of the key, each of the um, keywords as well as the as well as the gifts, is the full book going to have a collection of a bigger collection of examples for each? Yes, uh, for example, uh, when you talk about uh, the the right side of the character sheet, I know that is uh, a little. Uh, um, we have a lot, we are little for the supernatural side on the quick start, but uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, we will have uh, in the core book uh, uh, like the like Dungeons and Dragons domains, okay, 
Mm-hmm. So uh, we will have the purview like a scion. You can have a different example, but uh, you have to know that, uh, to understand that uh, the gifts uh, for the prodigy are, uh, prodigies are uh, more light skin. Mm-hmm. Not they, they, they influence your power, yes, but uh, they are not so, for example, you have fire, you can, you can make a fireball, but if you have uh, poison, you can make a poison ball. <laughs> In Epigony, we, do, we, do, we didn't have dif- some uh, entity of the meat have uh, particular qualities that make them immune or resistant to some elements, but it's a lot, you can do a lot of things, so... Mm-hmm. But we have enough example for every for every keyword for every keyword in character sheet who are working on example and on um, on explanation or how to choose the best. Mm-hmm. We did, we did uh, four years of playtesting, and uh, so we know what can be useful, what can be a good idea on the on the on the on the sheet. But uh, when you when you play it, uh, oh, what can I do? Like as you, as you said about fate, mm-hmm. the the the, the uh, Epigony was was uh, started with fate, but we had the same problem. Uh, what can I do? What, what is the? So I took the idea behind the cipher system of the phrase. I am uh, so with my focus and Epigony took a lot of from uh, the experience of other game mm-hmm. designer uh, from the world. Yeah, the whole I am an adjective noun who verbs um, concept within the cipher system. Yes. Uh, and you know, with the, with that in with that in with that in mind, um, one of the when it comes, to, I'm guessing that the, I'm guessing that e- now you have a you have a couple of visions in um, in the quick start. And I'm ge- I'm guessing that the that that there will be a, a larger supply of visions within the full book, is that yes. correct? Yes. Uh, what are visions? For ex- we need a premise. What are mm-hmm. visions? Epigon is not a setting; it's a meta setting. Mm-hmm. Like the play by apocalypse, uh, a lot of play by apocalypse, and they are not setting. You don't have the map of the world. You have a flavor, a mood. So we decided to to to, to 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 make the same things, but the pigeon is a lot more specialized. So uh, we have visions. What are visions? Your point of view about the pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When uh, um, the, the core book vision, there are two core, two visions. The core book, Gods of London, that is a, a crime story, a, a crime, a crime. Um, uh, um, I love a lot. I, I, I came from the world of from the cinema world. My my dad is one, I'm a reviewer, and my dad, my family has a lot of connection with the cinema, the, mm-hmm. the movie world in Italy. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, Epigoni took a lot of inspiration from the genre of uh, cinema of mm-hmm. movie. And for example, you have uh, Gods of London, that is Gangs of London, mm-hmm. <laughs> or Peaky Blinders, and is a crime. Is a, the flavor is a, a more like crime stories. Mm-hmm. You have uh, the the mob, for example, the mob of the ma- of the fair, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you have another another vision that is mythical knights. That I think uh, that for uh, an Italian an Italian uh, uh, an Italian uh, reader can be a, a little a little difficult to understand some things. Mm-hmm. For, uh, but mythical knights is uh, the uh, um, as I say in Italy is. Uh, a sad, uh, a sad laugh. Uh, Riso Amaro, we call it. We had a film that is uh, Riso Amaro, but it's, it speak about rice too, because mm-hmm. uh, rice, uh, rice and laugh in Italy have the same words. So right, riso. Mm-hmm. So we, we call that the uh, the, um, the sad laugh that uh, is about Italy in the nineties. Mm-hmm. We have a lot uh, of uh, incarnation, like the president, the president. <laughs> As you, as you understand, in Italy we had a, a particular president during the, the during the nineteenth, mm-hmm. like uh, we call them Silvio, and uh, there is a lot of uh, of irony, of uh, sad irony about our 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 uh, our country, mm-hmm. and they are two different. I decided to put two different vision, one more crime, more action, and one action but more sarcastic. Mm-hmm. To, to make and to to to, uh, to 
to make to understand that uh, epigony you, with epigony you can do your own mythologies your own saga your own stories Mm -hmm. And in the vision book that is on the Kickstarter, we have a lot of other vision. We have uh, the first revision that I can speak about as Atlan by Roberto Runa. is one of uh, my team, one of the writers of my team. is uh, his first product. Uh, Atlan is about uh, Mexi Me Mesoamerica, Mexico, mm -hmm. with the Aztec gods and uh, entity of the myth uh, with connection in the, the mod, the colonization of Mexico. The, the story of the modern Mexico, uh, mm -hmm. Midnight in Moscow, that is by and the Midnight in Moscow by um, Alessandro Fietta, mm -hmm. one of the other writers of my team, that speak about uh, Russia, the Russia of the of after uh, after communism, mm -hmm. the Russia of the first 19, mm -hmm. 90s, and uh, with a lot of uh, influence from uh, uh, the, the 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 world of the fables. Mm -hmm. the, we have Baba Yaga. You had you had the, the struggle between the old, the ancient myth uh, and, and the communist myth uh, and the new Russia. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, another uh, another vision, Parle, that's about pirates. Pirates, mm -hmm. well, because we need pirates. So yeah, uh, Every <laughs> everything's better with pirates. Yeah, everything's better with pirates. Now, and oh, go ahead. Uh, so yes, yes, and I think that well, we, we have a point and where flashes, flashes are like microvision. Mm -hmm. uh, flashes are uh, the, a vision is a 30, 30 page uh, with faction, with adventure seed, uh, with a lot of description. Uh, and we had a lot of flashes. Flashes are like microvision. For mm -hmm. example, I wrote uh, Mei Fumado, that is uh, um, the Japan one, the pop, mm -hmm. the J-pop, as I call it. But in Italy, we have a problem with the copyright with the word J-pop, so we can mm -hmm. uh, uh, You have uh, you have uh, uh, less faction. Mm, you don't have adventure seed, but only question like uh, Egon from Harper. You have this, you know the island, the islands of Egon. I think it's Egon, the, the more the correct pronunciation. Mm -hmm. is uh, uh you can the the, the flashes are more like that mm -hmm. so now with that with that in mind what are you shooting for as far as the total page count for the book proper well uh with my art director that uh, uh we, we we projected projected as <laughs> well we um, the the, man, the the books are going to be uh, the two the two physical one uh, more or less 240 40 pages a uh, five formats so it is uh, like uh, like a play by the apocalypse mm -hmm. and um, but we can be from 240 for to 320 Mm -hmm. it, uh, 20, yeah, 20. it depends on the <laughs> because Italian is not is not a synthetic language. Mm -hmm. We had, we had a lot of problems when 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 uh, we started to write the Pigoni for the international for the international Kickstarter. We had a lot of problem because in Italy English is more synthetic is more is more um, is more interesting <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> In Italy, we have a lot of blah blah blah, as I call that. <laughs> so maybe English version can be a little, a little with with a, um, less pages, but for language problem, pro pro problematic. Mm -hmm. And translating into any language, no matter no matter which no matter which one you go with, is always going to be an interesting time. Yes, yes. is that's the most charitable way for me to say it. <laughs> I think that uh, I think that the one of the great uh, now I can say as a, this is what uh, I, I was a consultant for RPG World, Italian World for a lot of time, mm -hmm. but this is my time as an international author. So yeah. we can international we can say I'm not famous, but international author is the correct terms, I think. And uh, uh, one of the things uh, that I um, that my translator Chiara and uh, my uh, other trans my social media manager Beatrice. Uh, uh, make me understand uh, with the by crying probably uh, that, that was that uh, when you when you try to make an international product you have to write it in your language uh, 
thinking about that it would be translated. Mm -hmm. For example, we had a lot of. Uh, <laughs> can, if you need, if you want it, I can have a, some, an interest an anecdote on translation. Um, we can, we have we have one of the incarnation in Epigoni. One of the, of the subtypes of the incarnation is called in Italian maschere. Okay. In English, we call them fasad. Mm -hmm. uh, Maschere in Italian is the word for mask, okay, for the mask, the physical one, but even for the character. For example, Arlecchino, when you is a maschera in Italian, okay, mm -hmm. uh, but the character, like the trope, we can call them trope, for example, no? In Italy, maschera is physical maschera, physical mask, but even the trope, the Arlecchino, the Pulcinella. Good. So when we tried, when we needed to translate, when we decided to translate uh, the, the mask, the maschere, Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it was difficult because uh, in English there's not a word that has the the the, 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 the significance, mm -hmm. significance. Uh, and we took uh, as I said um, we, when we started making the class uh, let's stop uh, let me, uh, think about it uh, for a lot of, uh, for a lot of things and I saw bleach mm. you know bleach <laughs> <laughs> bleach is uh, I I am a great fan of bleach yeah. Uh, I think that Bleach, uh, but I think that Bleach uh, ended uh, ended uh, with the Arankar. Yeah, that's uh, the that's the um, my brother's my brother Xanatrix, who is a who is a frequent get who is a frequent appearance on the podcast has this has um has this running gag where he where he claims that Tite Kubo owes him money because he created a um Shinigami um. Quincy Vizard combo years ago as a joke, and then that's exactly what happened during the during the um, during the Thousand Year Blood War arc. <laughs> and he's like, "Where's my goddamn money?" <laughs> well, I think that the Thousand the, the, the Thousand Year Blood War was terrible, and uh, but but I love uh, Bliss. I love the Resurrection, the Arankar, the mm -hmm. Karakuri arc. Uh, what, what, yeah, if you. Uh, if you you read the quick start, as you can see, mm. Cernunnos mm -hmm. was based yeah. on Coyote Stark. Yeah, and okay. to, and in all in all fairness, um, there were a lot of there were a lot of behind the scenes tumult when it came to late when it came to later on. There were times where Kubo wanted to wanted to end it, but he was he was told to continue, which is why when he finally did end it after the Blood War arc, he um. Annou he announced his retirement yes. for for about a few years, and then he did burn the witch, and he and apparently the <laughs> apparently the spark came back. So who knows? Yeah, what's yeah, yeah, we, now I'm working. I'm, I'm waiting for the El Hark. I'm. Uh, I think that. And. And, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. and to be fair, Bert. Burn the Witch was supposed to be a one-off, but I think I think it I think he had too much fun doing it because it's um it very much play it very much plays to his strengths. Yes, yes. Burn the Witch. I think that you can play Burn the Witch with the pig on it too. Huh? The dragon, the idea behind it. Yeah, I'd and say I'd say I'd say you I'd say you can. You just have to take a different approach than you than you would. Yes. Yes. For um, for the for the like for the likes of say, of say, um, bleach or so, or something or something else um, because because truth truth be told then any um any entry that you that utilizes the concept of the of the modern world with something hit with something hidden beneath it, I think can be a can be applicable. To Epigioni in so, in some form or another. Yes, Epigoni is uh, uh, Epigoni, for example. Uh, the, the, um, uh, we can say that the veil, the, the veil behind the veil of Maya, no, mm -hmm. uh, is a lot like uh, the Karakuri arc. No, when they put another city, the city in another city is an, is mm -hmm. another, it is a wider, no. Yeah. Uh, so, and uh, as I said, when I, I started to <laughs> to. Um, so again, please. It was, it was my first, my first uh, review, you know? mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I decided that uh, the mask, the maschere in uh, in Epigoni now I have down the down the charade, the charade. Mm -hmm. 
the, as a quality that was put put uh, to make the uh, to make the mask the maschere more uh, uh, more translatable with mm -hmm. facade so yeah. if you if you if you look uh, and if you look uh, at the quick start you can say that they have a phrase when they when they took when they, they, they use their quality they make a phrase mm -hmm. <laughs> like uh, like the, the evil the evil chef is uh, in the quick start and yeah. they are a lot like uh, uh, Bankai and uh, uh, Resurrection when they talk when they when they make the poem, no. Mm -hmm. So uh, Epigon is uh, uh, so so I I, I love this uh, that that, that um, this anecdote because uh, sometimes uh, you you break your mind uh, with the translation when the, when, when Beatrice told me, but mm -hmm. you changed the rule. Well, it was more difficult changing English changing English. <gasps> Oh, I'd, 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 ima I'd imagine. Oh. Yes. Now, what are you shooting for as far as a release window? Not a not a date per se, but a but a general um a gen a general window. Ah, uh, well, uh, we put on Kickstarter that uh, it will be um, for uh, April 2030, 2030, <laughs> 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we are trying to make the Italian version that, uh, sorry for the international, <laughs> international uh, baker, but uh, we, st we started with, uh, um, for us it is more simple to, to make the playtest and write the text in Italian. Mm -hmm. uh, in, but uh, uh, we are trying to make the Italian version for Luca Comics and Games, so this uh, November. And mm -hmm. uh, we can try to uh, when we need uh, some playtest, you know, uh, and uh, so. But uh, uh, we will make the translation in in, uh, in contemporary. So maybe we can send the PDF. Uh, we we I don't promise that be before the before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And we will uh, uh, try to make a monthly. Uh, um, adjournment uh, for uh, for our Italian and the international baker with the beta, the um, the text and the, and the news about the system, the copper, then the pigoni. And where are your money? <laughs> what will you do with your money? Mm -hmm. So we can try to before April 2033. 2023 but as you know there in, in, in europe we have a little problem now yeah so maybe let's open mm -hmm. well i will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it de how it develops well. but, but with all that said i would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way up to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here. Thank you. And anytime you see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> well, as you can say, as an Italian, as an Italian person, I can say that drinking is one of the most important traditions. <laughs> And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>